Hello, and welcome to Schmitty's Guide on Weapon Mechanics in Secret World Legends. One of the new additions to the relaunch of the game is that each weapon now has its own meter, gauge, bar, uh, UI device down here to show its gimmick. And some of the gimmicks you will have to pay significant attention to and concentrate on to do well, and some of them will require almost no concentration. So we're going to just sort of be going through it uh, all of the weapons and what I think would be good for beginning players. So there are uh, nine weapons in the game as of launch. There are three melee weapons, three magic weapons, and three ranged weapons. And in each of these categories, one of those weapons is made for tanking and will give you extra health or generate large amounts of hate. One of them is made for DPS and will just have support, like adding exposed to a bill to enemies and just making it so that the life is easier and we beat things faster. And one of them will be made for healing, which will allow you to heal yourself or allies. So because I think that tank and DPS weapons are strong for leveling and healing weapons are a little bit weaker, we are going to be going through these by order of their role in the Holy Trinity. So we'll start with tanking weapons. Our melee tank weapon is Hammer. Its special ability here is Rage. Uh, as you can see we have our bar right here. This bar will fill up as we use our power abilities. They will add to our rage meter so you can see if we are not already enraged it will generate 6 rage per hit. And once we've gotten 2 rage which is at least 50 rage this goes up to 100 so you can fill this bar up twice the hammer. It will have some extra effects so it'll do more damage or give you HP or do something neat. Uh, this one is a low HUD focus weapon because you're not really going to be paying much attention to it. It just sort of works in the background. Every time you use a power ability, if you don't have enough rage, it gives you rage. And if you have enough rage, it automatically consumes it and gives you your additional effect. So I think this is one of the strongest weapons to level with in the game because it has incredible burst, uh, solid healing, and a low HUD focus uh, mechanic here. Next we'll be going to our magic tanking weapon, which is Chaos, and it's got uh, controlled Chaos. I wish I could show you this little, f head, this little display for the weapons I actually own, but I can't. So basically you will have uh, this little meter, and every time that your Chaos attacks deal damage that is a multiple of 8, you'll gain 2 to 4 Paradoxes. When you reach all the way to full, you'll have one of three effects occur. You'll either create AoEs on the ground, and if anything is in it, they'll take substantial damage and be knocked down. You'll create doppelgangers that'll help you deal extra damage, or you will give your opponent a small buff, and if you purge that buff or defeat that enemy when it's got the buff on it, you will gain a substantially more powerful version of that effect. So again, Control Chaos, Chaos in general is a low HUD focus weapon because you'll just get these as the, you go and uh, the effects will just automatically occur. The most attention you'll have to pay is when the singularities occur, you will want to walk enemies into the AoEs, but you're still going to be paying attention to the battlefield and not staring at these uh, little HUD graphs down here. Uh, our ranged tanking weapon is heavy munitions and this is our first high HUD focus weapon. It has four different types of ammo, one that adds a dot, one that decreases your enemy's defense, one that lets you do more damage, and one that heals. Every time that you run out of ammo here, it's essentially a reload mechanic, you'll have six shots. Every time you run out of ammo, all of your shotgun abilities will randomly change into one of these types of uh, shells. And you have to pick the skill that coincides with the type of shell that you want at this point in time to keep going. So not only are you going to have to pay attention to how many shells you have left, but even if you've mastered that and you can count your shells perfectly, you're still going to have to look at your skill bar to see which, bull or which shells the skills have turned into and choose the correct one. Now we're going to be going to DPS. So our melee DPS is going to be Blade, and again I can't really show that one because I have it, but you have Spirit Blade. Each of your attacks has a 50% chance to add a 
a level of chi to your blade, and when it's at full, you'll actually have to use an active ability here called Spirit Blade to activate it. So this is medium HUD focus, because the chi generates by itself, and after you use Spirit Blade, your additional effects occur by themselves, but you will have to be paying enough attention to know when to activate Spirit Blade to begin with. So this is somewhere in the middle, and uh, it is unique in that you actually have an active required to use your Spirit Blade. Next we have our DPS uh, Magic ability, and this is Thermotics for Elementalism, also a high HUD focus weapon. So basically your fire and lightning elemental attacks will generate heat. The more heat you have each time you reach one of these cutoffs, you'll deal more damage. But if you reach the maximum, you'll be unable to attack for several seconds with any fire or lightning attacks. Uh, you can recover even well overheated from that by using a uh, cold elemental ability, an ice ability. So basically you're going to be wanting to try to keep your level between 50 but not at 100 by using your fire and lightning abilities and cooling down with your ice abilities. So you're going to be paying attention to this a lot and it's going to take some getting used to before you've got the hang of it. Uh, next we have our DPS uh, ranged abilities, which is a uh, pistol here, which is just a revolver roulette. And each time you take a shot, your chamber will swap, and when the chambers line up, you will gain a 3 second damage boost for pistols only. And this is low HUD focus, like you're generally just going to get the ability and then you're just going to mash on pistol skills for 3 seconds and then move on with your life. You're not really paying attention to that. Like if you happen to have more pistol ability or more pistol energy, you're going to be using it. If you don't, you're not going to. Either way, you really just don't have to pay attention to this at all. And finally, we're going to be looking at the heal weapons. So our healing melee weapon is Fist, so you have Primal Wrath. Uh, works a lot like the blade, where you'll generate fury as you attack or heal, and when it gets to a certain amount, you will be using either the DPS ability, which is Frenzied Wrath, or the healing ability, which is... Uh, where is it? Invigorating Wrath, there we are. Basically, it's just going to swap your bar into uh, new fist abilities that don't require any energy. And again, this is medium focus because you'll have to be paying attention to the Primal Wrath enough to know when to activate it, but after you do, you just get your skill bar and you can use your skills, and it's easy. Next, we have uh, Blood, which has Blood Offering. <clears throat> uh, when you do more damage, or when you do uh, blood skills that, that do damage, you'll increase your corruption level. <clears throat> the higher your corruption level is, the more damage you will do with your skills, but those skills will start taking some of your life to use, and you'll start becoming more difficult to heal. The flip side of that, the healing side, is martyrdom. And again, the more your healing level goes up, the more your martyrdom levels increase. You'll start healing more, but the heals will start taking your own life energy, and you'll become harder to heal yourself. Uh, these are opposite sides of the same coin here, so anything that increases your corruption will decrease your mar martyrdom, and vice versa. So they sort of have a tug-of-war with each other. This is a very difficult weapon to start using because you can actually kill yourself with it. And you will want to be paying attention to these bars all the time, and it'll take some getting used to again to really get the hang of how to do this. So I think this is one of the most difficult weapons to level up with in the game. And finally, we have Assault Rifle, the most difficult weapon to level up with, in my opinion. And it has the Grenade Launcher. All of your power abilities will have a chance, a percent chance, let's look at that real quick, to slot a grenade. So this one has, you can see at the bottom there, a 37.5% chance to slot a grenade. Uh, once you have bought any of the grenade launching abilities, which is this middle line here, your assault rifle will start slotting grenades, regardless of whether you have one of those abilities actually on your bar. When that happens, you have this cook timer on the grenade. So the first six seconds, if you use the skill, uh, you can see it's really weak. It doesn't do much of anything. Uh, but if you let it get to a cooked state, it actually does some of the most damage and some of the most effective skills in the game. So uh, the grenade highly punishes you for not using it while it's cooked, 
and it highly punishes you for forgetting to use it or not using it at all because at the end when the timer hits zero it explodes in your assault rifle dealing about 15% of your maximum health of damage which is pretty bursty for a gimmick and can kill you so due to the high bursty damage the fact that slotting a grenade is random and paying attention to whether it's cooked or not is incredibly important and it's just the fact that it's a heal weapon so you don't get any hit rating off of it all those three things combined make it so that I think that this is the most difficult weapon to level up within the game it is certainly a high HUD focus weapon again just like blood so uh, again I think hammer and chaos are probably the easiest and most effective ways to level in the game both of those are incredible weapons and I think that blood and assault rifle are just incredibly difficult to start leveling with looking at you warlock so if hopefully this will help you out and we'll start going through the real content of the game here and I will see you there